Hmm. Well, don't sell yourself short. You know, I've never met a Stanton yet that wasn't bright and creative and energetic and... Uh, actually, yes, I have, but she was probably just a reject or a throwback or something. You know, I have had all this iced tea. Um, do you mind, you know? Mm, sure, it's uh, right over there. Okay, thanks, I'll be right back. No, no! Oh. That door. Oh, sorry about that. Obviously, it's not the loo. Um, it's a very nice room, though. It's not uh, really messy in there right now. No, actually, it's very neat. The bed was made and everything. I never get around to doing that, but I understand. Bedrooms sometimes are sacred, at least mine is, so I understand. Um, which way? Oh, right over there. Ah, thanks. I'll be right back. Peekaboo. Shh, she might hear you. Oh, oh, yes, of course, of course. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll let myself out then. Oh. And I must say, quality girl talk. Keep up the good work. I, I ruined dinner. I was a nice try, though. And a little sand never killed anyone. Yeah, if I was supposed to be good for you, it's hell on the teeth, though. <laughs> try. Do I have to? What, is it Thursday? I never eat French bread on Thursday. It's a... It's a political statement. Good, more for me. You, you know what I, I like about you? No. What do you like about me? You don't play games. What, what I see is what I get. <laughs> You're going to have to stop sweet-talking me like that, Frank Scanlon. <sighs> I'm saying this all wrong. You're saying it great. I know I promised you a nice dinner and a fancy restaurant. I'm glad we came here. Sandy baguettes and all. Yeah, me too. I wanted our first date to be somewhere we belong. Did you ever notice how Julie's halo sparkles at 20 paces? Why are you doing this? Are those devil horns growing right out of your eyebrows? Why do you want to break up Julie and Frank anyway? She can do a lot better. What was it that Cooper had on Julie? You remember? In that file? The one you... stole? Try not to think so hard, Eve. You might hurt yourself. Hey! I'm not through with you. I think it's better if, um... we speak in private. I'll make myself scarce. No, don't. There are so many rumors flying around this place, I would much rather have it all out in the open. Doctors? A moment, please. Grace was just about to tell us what transpired in Dr. Porterman's office, and I am sure you'll be interested. First off, Greg Cooper hasn't regained consciousness. It's been almost 24 hours since he coded. So there is a god. His family is lobbying to have him transferred to a long-term care facility. And? And there's going to be a formal review of your procedures. I'm sorry. I really am sorry, Dr. Burgess. Oh, don't be. I appreciate your candor. Hey, don't sweat it. We're all hands at these hearings. I'll give you some pointers. Yeah, you were so much help with the last one. <laughs> all right, people, there's still a full waiting room out there. Let's hop to it. You okay? Of course I am. Hey, back from X-ray. How'd it go? Did you smile for the camera? Oh, she sure did. Oh, she was right. very brave. Great. <laughs> Let me see these. Okay, let's look at this x-ray. Huh. Well, looking at this, I'd say you were very lucky. I don't see any broken bones. But hey, next time you go rollerblading, I want you to practice stopping first, okay? Okay. So what happened to you? What? Why are you in a chair like me? Well, I injured my spinal cord when I was young. And I'm getting better. It's just taking a long time. I guess we're both pretty lucky, aren't we? Uh -huh. That's right. Listen, tell the mother I want to have her ankle kept elevated, um, put the ice on it for the swelling, and take the anti-inflammatories as needed for the pain. Okay? Dr. Burgess, is there anything else? No, not necessary. You are out of here, my friend. 
Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. What? Well, I just want you to know that if uh, Dr. Cordomine wants to talk to me... This inquiry doesn't change the fact that I'm chief resident. I know that. As your superior, I am telling you, if Dr. Quartermain talks to you, you tell him the truth. Money doesn't always make a difference. I mean, it can't change your health or love or things like that that are really important. Are, are you kidding? Tell that to the moms who, who can't afford health care or the families that are are so strung out trying to pay their bills, they don't have the, the time to give their kids the love and attention they need. But that just sounds so cold. I mean, say you hadn't blown your knee, and, and say you'd gone pro and made a million. That wouldn't have changed who you are, would it? You'd still be Francis Xavier Scanlon. Maybe. Mm. Come on. The moment you started to get snooty, your mom would hit you upside your head. <laughs> you know I'm right. Yeah, I wish I would have had the chance to find out. That knee changed everything. Six inches of air, you called it. Yeah. Six inches of my dad might still be alive. Why? He, he didn't have the best life, you know. He was, he was really a bright guy. He spent his whole life working in a factory. Mm. But it, it didn't matter. Even, even when he was downsized after 22 years, you know why? Because his son was a wide receiver at Notre Dame. Frank Scanlon Sr. was somebody. He'd walk into the bar and everybody gather around to hear him talk about his latest road trip, what he did, what he saw. He never missed a game. When I got hurt and came home, maybe he did uh, less talking and more drinking. You can't blame yourself for that. Dad getting drunk and running his car into that tree was just an Irish ritualistic form of suicide, like the Harry Carey for the Japanese. No guilt, lots of honor in it for the family. I'm sorry. No, don't be. I don't talk about this much. Maybe you should. You're like sodium pentothal, you know that? True serum? Thank you. I've never been compared to a drug before. Your presence is intoxicating. You remember the night Cooper was brought in? How could I forget? It brought up a lot of awful memories for me. I had to face the truth about myself that night. You think we're going to be able to have a drink without fighting? Honestly? No. I didn't think so. Listen, Scott, um, I realize you've had a hard couple of months. You too. And actually, I'm very impressed with the kind of father that you are. I think that's your best quality. Well, then here's the fatherhood. Something we can agree on. Hmm. Oh. You'll see. I think Port Charles is a great place to raise a child. I've lived in cities all over the world, and there's no other place I trust with mine. I know. I grew up here. Is somebody here? Oh, that was probably the neighbors. The walls in this place are uh, paper thin. Really? Cool. You know, that could be kind of fun. I spent many an evening keeping up with those Joneses. <laughs> oh, you okay? I, I, I gotta sit down just, just for a minute. Well, can I get you something? Uh, no, no, that's okay. I, I feel a little bit better. Are you sick? No, no, no. I, I'm just in love and pregnant. Well, it's terrific. I, I love babies. But is something wrong? Uh, no, no, I, I don't think so. You know, maybe if I just put something in my stomach, that would help. Here, let me get you something to eat. What, what would you like? Oh, what, what do you have? Well, I've got some, uh, cheese and crackers, um... Cherry pie, a uh, sandwich? Ew, uh, maybe just a couple crackers would help settle it. This is bizarre, though. It's not like me to uh, lose my appetite. Uh, so is this your first child? Uh, my stupid question. No, no, that, that, that's okay. Um, it's my first one I'm having with my dog. Yeah. You know, you're being really kind to someone you don't even know. Dominique would do the same thing. Um, 
You know, I'm imposing on you, though, so much. I, I think I, I better get going. You know what? Don't you dare. You just stay put till you feel better. Thank you. You're welcome. Could Would you do me a favor? Uh, probably. Could you tell me something about Dominique? I mean, anything that you could remember about her? I am counting on you, okay? You've got to tell her everything you can remember about me. I think it's important that she know as much personal history as possible. What? What? <laughs> what did I say? You tilted your head just now. The way you said those words, it was just like Dominique used to do. Really? Yeah, just for a split second there, I felt like I had Dominique in the room with me. But it's just me. Yeah, but you still have a part of her alive in you. It's kind of weird. I mean, for so long, I... I felt uh, all alone, and I didn't even know I had a sister or an uncle, and um, now I can't seem to get away from them. I miss her so much. I think about her every day. <laughs> and, you know, right now, particularly, I think about if she was alive, you know, all the things we'd be sharing, like shopping, of course. And secrets and the joy of our children together. I gotta go now. I'm, I'm gonna leave. Are you, are you sure you're all right? Uh, yes and no. But this is just really a lot for me to deal with right now. Um, but, you know, I would really like it if maybe we could get together again. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd like that. Me too. Okay. Okay, well, you know, um, uh, Jack's Cosmetics is where I work. You can call me anytime. All right, um... Bye. Bye. It was nice meeting you. I don't care what you tell the review board as long as you tell them the truth. If you don't, I'll know. And I will hold it against you. I'm going to do whatever I feel is necessary to make sure that we interns do not lose a top-notch doctor and a top-notch chief resident. You hate the way I operate. I never said that. You ask me if I wanted to start Cooper on anti-seizure meds, and I said no. What else can you say that isn't a lie? My interpretation of the truth does not have to be a lie. The only interpretation that counts is Dr. Jones's, and you heard him loud and clear. Cooper should have been on anti-convulsives. Okay, and what if he had been faking? What would that medication have done to him? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he wasn't. You know, that's hindsight. Hindsight. Are you honestly not going to fight this? It's up to the system to decide, and the system will decide what's right. You are an African-American woman doctor in a male hierarchical institution, and you're putting your faith in the system? As opposed to letting some white male intern tell me what to do? Huh. This conversation is over. You know, I don't, I don't get you. I, I really don't. And you're always so ready to fight with us. Why aren't you going to fight for yourself? I said it is over. Dr. Mayor. Here, Matt. Yeah. Dr. Collins, hi. It's Ellen Burgess. If it isn't about money, it isn't worth it. Evelyn, you just don't quit, do you? No, I mean, come on, think about it. I mean, nothing else matters. I mean, especially not that love thing. Never Please. works. Frank and Julie are hardly in love. Well, maybe not terminal lust anyway. I'll bet it's about six months before Dr. Squeaky Clean gets it on with Mr. Nice. Wow, that certainly hit a nerve. Change of bedpan. Why, Dr. Ramsey, I am shocked. You actually care about someone else besides the guy in the mirror. Don't bet on it. Sucker. 